During the Ukrainian operation in Russia's Kursk Oblast, launched in August 2024, the Russians have lost almost 8,000 soldiers, which is about 15 battalions. The press service of the commander of the Air Assault Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine said this. The exact number of Russian losses over that period of time amounted to 7,980 people. The Air Assault Forces noted that serious achievements were also made in terms of Russian equipment and weapons. In total, 58 tanks, 182 infantry fighting vehicles, 46 armored personnel carriers, 136 artillery systems, two multiple launch rocket systems, 592 vehicles, 46 electronic warfare systems and other special equipment were destroyed or damaged. The paratroopers captured nearly 300 Russian soldiers and seized nine tanks, nine armored personnel carriers, nine guns, six mortars, etc. The Air Assault Forces reported that during the Kursk operation, they destroyed three helicopters and 146 Russian drones. In addition, 9,874 Russian FPV drones were suppressed by electronic warfare systems. Ukraine launched its cross-border incursion into Kursk Oblast on October 6, claiming to initially seize some 1,300 square kilometers, but recently facing mounting pressure as Russia pulls in reinforcements. Ukrainian troops continue active operations in the Kursk direction, destroying the enemy's combat potential for the third month in a row. Through open source research, MediaZona, a Russian independent media outlet together with BBC Russia, confirmed the names of 75,382 Russian soldiers who had been killed since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. Since MediaZona's last update in mid-October, the names of 2,483 Russian soldiers have been added to the list of casualties. The journalists note that the actual figures are likely significantly higher as their verified information comes from public sources such as obituaries, posts by relatives, regional media reports and statements from local authorities. The last few weeks amid ongoing battles in Ukraine's eastern oblasts, as well as in Russia's Kursk Oblast, Russian forces have experienced some of its heaviest losses since the start of the full-scale war. According to some experts, the surge in losses in recent months may be one of the factors behind the deployment of North Korean troops to Russia, which reportedly began fighting alongside Russian forces in limited numbers on October the 29th. According to Midyazana's estimates, a majority of those killed in action come from Rostov, Sverdlovsk, Bashkiria, and Chelyabinsk oblasts, as well as the Buryatia Republic. A surge of recruitment by the Kremlin in the predominantly Muslim regions of Bashkortostan and Tatarstan have also showed an increase in those killed in action in recent months. The Biden administration said Thursday it has information that some 8,000 North Korean soldiers are now in Russia's Kursk region near Ukraine's border and preparing to help the Kremlin fight against Ukrainian troops. In a dramatic moment during a UN Security Council meeting, the deputy U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Robert Wood, asked for more time to add to earlier comments condemning the increasing military cooperation between Russia and North Korea. We just received some information, just coming in now, that right now there are some 8,000 DPRK soldiers in Kursk Oblast, Wood said, using the acronym for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea. Kursk is a region that Ukrainian forces took by surprise in August. And I have a very respectful question for my Russian colleague, does Russia still maintain that there are no DPRK troops in Russia? That's my only question and final point he said. The Russian representative at the council meeting, which Russia called to discuss international peace and security, did not respond to the comment and the session was adjourned. After 980 days of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, in violation of the UN Charter, with all the death and destruction Russia has caused, Russia is today falsely trying to blame others for its war and for Putin's obstinance. Russia started this war. Russia could end it tomorrow. Until it does, Ukraine has an inherent right to defend itself, and the international community can and must 
ensure Ukraine's borders are not redrawn by force. As I've said many times, Russia's disinformation fools no one. The real issue is not international support for Ukraine's defense. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine is the victim. For Russia, war means conquest. For Ukraine, survival. The issue today is Russia's unlawful aggression against Ukraine and the countries that are dangerously fueling it. It is not hard to miss the irony of Russia calling this meeting just as 10,000 soldiers from the DPRK deploy in Russia to train and potentially join Russian forces against Ukraine. We heard yesterday the international community's serious concerns Russia may be planning to use DPRK soldiers against Ukrainian forces. We caution Russia not to make such a dangerous miscalculation. DPRK participation in combat against Ukraine would be an alarming expansion of the conflict. Already, the DPRK's troop deployment in Russia marks a dangerous expansion in Russian DPRK ties. Russia's actions with respect to the DPRK are not only dangerous, but they are antithetical to its responsibility as a permanent member of this UN Security Council. Russia's military cooperation with the DPRK violates multiple UN Security Council resolutions, which prohibit both procuring DPRK arms and providing military training. Specifically, Russia's training of DPRK soldiers involving arms or related materiel violates UN Security Council Resolutions 1718, 1874, and 2270. We condemn in the strongest possible terms the path the Kremlin is taking with the DPRK. Moscow has shown the same contempt for this institution when it violated other UN Security Council resolutions by deepening military ties with Tehran. Iran has supplied the Kremlin with armed drones as well as close-range ballistic missiles, undermining the security of Europe as well as the Middle East. Meanwhile, China continues to downplay its large-scale support for Russia's defense industrial base, providing materials key to Russia's defense production, including weapons components, UAV and cruise missile technology, machine tools, microelectronics, and nitrocellulose. PRC-based companies have even collaborated with Russian defense firms to design and produce long-range attack drones. China cannot credibly claim to be a voice for peace when it enables Russia to wage the largest war in Europe in decades. China's support to Russia is decisive. China's support is prolonging the war. China talks about creating conditions for peace. But China could quickly create those conditions by suspending the support to Russia. And I want to be clear. It is not our intention to vilify or smear China. These are facts. Uh, I'm not going to respond to my Chinese colleague. I think I've been very clear. Uh, we just received uh, some information just coming in minutes ago that indicates that there are right now 8,000 DPRK soldiers in Kursk Oblast. And I have a very respectful question uh, for my Russian colleague. Uh, does Russia still maintain that there are no DPRK troops in Russia? That's my only question and my final point. Thank you.